Okay, so you can see we're driving along here. I've just started the self-driving system or the level two ADAS system. And you can see it actually works pretty well, even on these side roads. It'll see the lines, you can see the two green lines on the screen. And uh, even when it only has one of the lines, it continues to drive without sort of any hiccups, any sort of uncertain moves, anything like that. Uh, it's overall, it's very smooth. It tends to actually start braking relatively far behind a vehicle, so you don't have these sudden stops. I haven't really had any issues with phantom braking, although as you see, we come up to this mail truck, sometimes it struggles. I actually took control of it there. I'm not sure exactly what it would do, but I think it would just come to a stop. There are some types of situations that it can't handle. It can't handle sharp curves. It won't slow down for them yet, although they've announced that they want to fix that. It won't stop for stoplights, stop signs, or pedestrians. It does actually stop for, or actually try to avoid, or will break for cyclists. And you can actually see, if you take a look at the screen right behind the steering wheel, uh, that when we have two people standing right next to each other, a cyclist and a pedestrian, that it will actually have a little icon. It'll see the cyclist, but as of now, it doesn't actually see the pedestrian. So it has some improvements to make. It's not up there with Tesla's full self-driving or maybe a couple of the other ones, but I think the promise is really there. This is a vehicle with a company that's been pouring a lot of money into it. They have this subsidiary, the company that they bought, Zensiact, and Zensiact basically is filled with researchers who are working full-time on trying to develop this type of software. They have a lot of research, in uh, the academic literature. They have a huge NVIDIA chip system that they're building and currently are renting a lot of NVIDIA chips to train their model. And the hardware in the EX90 and on the announced sedan, the ES90, which will come out next year, uh, is built for this type of uh, technology, for this type of feature. They have a LiDAR system in there currently. It kind of looks strange. It's a little, little it almost looks like a taxi sign on the uh, front of the vehicle. Um, but this is, as you can see in Mark Robar's video, a very useful technology. It's not just relying on the cameras, it actually is something like radar, but much faster and more precise, basically sending out this signal and seeing what bounces back. And so it can see things when a camera would not be able to. It basically almost guarantees that you'll stop for an object in front of you. And so that hardware, although it's not currently active, it's just an information collecting mode, uh, but rumors have it will be released in the next month or so. Uh, once that's active, this should improve dramatically. You know, there's still a few things to work on. If you see a split in the road, it's particularly not on a highway. Sometimes we'll get confused about which direction it's supposed to take. You know, presumably this shouldn't matter, although since it can't handle sharp curves that well, you know, sometimes cross over the line. I'm not sure how it would handle uh, going in the wrong direction if there's a sharp turn that it's not anticipating. But by and large, I think they're making great strides. They actually have committed to updating the chip. So they currently have the most powerful NVIDIA chip in the, in the uh, car, and that's helping you know, this self-driving technology. But they're actually planning on replacing that with essentially two chips that are doing the same thing like the latest Teslas have. Uh, and this offers redundancy, basically making independent decisions about what the car should do. And if everything's working correctly, they should suggest the same. But if they start suggesting something different, that'll notify the car and actually notify the driver that they should take some action bring it into the dealer and see what's going wrong because something seems to be not working as expected with at least one of the chips. And that's actually really important because if a chip starts to fail, you know, without this redundancy, what would happen? You would learn it's failing when it smashes into another vehicle or a tree. Um, so this redundancy is actually really important. That's how you want it to do it. And the fact that they're putting this redundancy and actually updating all of the previously made cars to this for free suggests that they're committed to uh, to this technology. So I think that they could be one of the ones that really takes off. Yes, there are others. There's Tesla. There's Ford has its version that works pretty well on highways. Same with GM. Mercedes has a version. Actually, Mercedes is the only other one with a LiDAR system. 
And the Mercedes ones actually works in limited portions of highways in California, so long as you're not going more than 40 miles per hour. And it actually lets you look away. You can read a book so long as you're ready to take over if it tells you to. But you, unlike all the other systems, the Mercedes-Benz doesn't require you to keep your eyes on the road. And as I mentioned, that's the only other car other than the Volvo EX90 that currently has LiDAR. So I hope that's where Volvo will soon be, hopefully in the May update. If you are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. This is not a full-time gig by any means. I just do this occasionally, often at night. And so it, you know, it's very encouraging to see people watching the videos and subscribing. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.